So we're here with Wayne Martin at uh, Childerly Sporting. Thank you to Mr. Paul Childerly for uh, letting us come here today. Um, so we're going for a mooch. We are, mate. Yes, we're all set up, ready to go. I've got all my kit going. Have a quick run through the kit. Tell so, you what we're going to be using. As it's totally new to us, what is a mooch? Tell us what a mooch is. Um, we're basically going out looking for something to hunt to put in the pot. Right. You know, it's proper hunting. It's on foot, stalk into what we can, take what we can for, for the pot. And what do you see us stalking while we're out mooching today then? I've seen a few ducks around. There's some pheasants that are last year's pheasants, so there's some real wild birds about. There'll be a few squirrels around because the feed's been putting down for the, for the ducks. We could also run into even possibly a hare. Um, there's a few hares about, so it, it's going to be varied, I think. So I've got my Evo Field Pro. That's what I always use. That's predominantly my number one hunting yeah. catapult. That's what I always use. I always go back to it. No matter what I do, I always go back to this catapult. And this is the one you designed, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, this is my design, yeah. I designed a few, but this is the one I just tend to always gravitate towards. Right. Um, they're using the red shot band in a 0 0.85, uh, tapered 25 to 20, and I'm using my new pro pouches. No one's actually seen these yet either, so. Okay, there's a bit a, of an exclusive. A bit of an exclusive one, yeah, they're due in stock soon, literally in the next couple of weeks. So with regards to, you say it's a, a red band, yep. so is there different grades of band then by the color or? Um, not, different, not just by the color, I mean, the color obviously defines the red shot band. You'll have different factories that produce different bands and they'll have different stretch ratios, so different power. So even though you may have another band that's a 0 0.85, the stretch ratio of that band could be higher, therefore okay. it's going to have less power. Yeah. You do yeah, use them shorter if it obviously has a higher stretch ratio, but still it doesn't have the same power as a band with a low stretch ratio. Right. A good hunting band, you want a stretch ratio between sort of four and a half to five with the ammo that I'm using. Which, leading on from that with ammo. Yeah. <laughs> got my little ammo bags here. I've got a little variety for today. It's a cold, windy day, so I've bought some 10 mil leads because they're just a little bit lighter than 11 mil leads. Okay. We've got some 12 millimeter steel, which we may try, if we see a duck, may try and get a shot in with the 12 mil steel because it's a nice big ball, large surface area mm -hmm. to create a good impact. And, and obviously we can't use lead on duck. Totally. Um, we've got some 11 millimeter lead as well, which is one of my main staples. And also, some 11 millimeter steel. This table's nice and level because they're not rolling everywhere. Mr. Childley's new table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, this is my accessories bag. We've got some spare bands. Obviously, you don't want to go out and get a breaker band and not have any spares. So we've got some spare bands there, obviously, set up the same as them. I've also got a target that I warm up with before I go out okay. shooting, sort of get my eye out a bit. Right. It's just this is what I carry with me all the time, really, to be honest. I've yeah. got um, my knife. I actually, I've got everything in here, it's like a little target. It knife is. sharpener. And also, two keys. Okay. In case I lose one. Yeah. Quite common then, is it? No, not, not yet, <laughs> touch wood, not yet. But you never know, you know, I don't want to be stuck out there and not be able to change my bands. So, and obviously I've got my food and drink in the, in the, the rucksack. So that's all you need for the mooch then? Yeah, we're set. Let's go out and see how we get on then. Yeah, let's do it. One for, the pot, One for the pot. Straight through the neck. Through the neck. Straight through the neck. Straight through the side of the neck, look. Broken neck. 
that's where the ball's gone in. There, look, right there. See that? Yeah. That's where it's broke. Good shot as well, sir. Thank you. One for the pot. One for the pot, one for the bag. Right, let's see if we can get something else, shall we? See what we can find. <laughs> That, that sort of time when you've got some leaves on the trees, but obviously yeah. summertime's too dense yeah. and everything's nest anyway, so you don't want to shoot it there anyhow. But then when the leaves start coming off, yeah, and you have some leaves on there, you, it gives it like an equal chance for hunter and vermin okay. or and prey, yeah. because you know you've got a better visual, but they've also still got little bits where they can hide behind, so they yeah. still feel semi safe, but you can still semi see them. I think that's what I prefer about hunting, you know what I mean? You, you're hunting, you're not going out stalking for a deer or going out pheasant shooting for a pheasant, we're going out looking for something to eat. So it doesn't matter whether that be a rabbit, a hare, a pigeon, a squirrel, a pheasant, you know, a duck, whatever it is that we're there to put out on the menu. Because I, I really do genuinely love it all. And there's recipes that I'll use for different sorts of meat, sorts of meat that have become my favourites for that type of meat. <laughs> I mean, one of the ones, a rabbit in uh, white wine and garlic with oh, rosemary nice. uh, and lemon, it's fantastic, slow cooked. Really, really nice. Uh, so that would be one of my favourite dishes. Then also the game terrain, yeah. which encompasses them all. Then also then the squirrel stew. You know, there's lots of different dishes for lots of different types of meat that I, could, I, could, I find it impossible to pick one, I think. But as a meat itself, a standalone, I think would be a pigeon. You know, pan fried pigeon, it's just fantastic. A, a really good red meat. Makes me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, I've got something for you later on. Ah, super. But if we can get a shot from here, we can try, can't we? Yeah. Oh, that's a Another one for the pot. <laughs> oh, back of the head, straight through, and out underneath. Beautiful, nice bite of, bite of ducks. So we're only about halfway through the day here. Yes. What's in the little bag there? I'll get time to get tucked into it, to be honest. It's my game to re mate. <laughs> made freshly Sounds for today, a couple of slices. We'll get, get the cameraman involved as well. <laughs> So we got pigeon, partridge, pheasant, and squirrel in this. Lovely. Surrounded by a bit of sausage meat, breadcrumb, wrapped in bacon, thyme, garlic, bit of onion. Looks brilliant. Yeah. Shame we haven't got smell of vision because it yeah. smells beautiful. <laughs> you smell it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get stuck in, so mate. So I'm hungry. Has Come all on. of this been shot with the catapult then? Not all of it. A lot of it has, but um, there's, there's so much in there. Yeah. Um, of course, the sausage. Yeah, 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 the sausage meat, yeah. <laughs> no, the, the pigeons, a couple of pigeons have been shot with the catapult. Uh, the squirrels, obviously, with the catapult. Uh, one of the pheasants was with the catapult, and the, the partridge and the other pheasants were shot with the shotgun. Super. Yeah, so it all goes in. Come on, tuck in. Bax, come on, Bax. Yeah. this before I tuck in. What would you say it was that's really got you hooked back into catapults? The catapults are very cheap, very accessible. You, know, you can go in your garden for an hour if you want. Yeah. Um, and it's, like I say, the ultimate test of skill, really. Being accurate with a catapult is it's so tough, so hard. Challenges. Yeah. I like challenges. 
And that, that kind of style of shooting with a catapult, the aim style is very challenging. Aim style? Aim style, yeah. So you've got like um, instinctive shooters, which is how I shot since I was a kid, was instinctive off of this hand. So hand-eye coordination and just shoot, draw back, shoot. Yeah. Whereas with an aim style, you're using your dominant eye, like you would a gun or a rifle, oh, yeah. looking down the band as you like your barrel. Okay, that makes sense. And the sort of shot, if you do everything correct, will follow roughly the line of where the band is. This will be scrapings from squirrels, I'd imagine. Okay. Just having a bit of a scrape around, see if they can find some food. Look at what they've buried. Could be a pheasant. But I would think, looking at where they are, in like the close area, there's a squirrel that's dotting around, scraping about. So a squirrel, you would tend to, they would all be a lot closer. Yeah, really. Yeah, especially as we've not seen anything anywhere else. So they've obviously favoured this area for a reason. Looking for the... Well, I see there's any sort of like tender roots or something they've been chewing on. Right. You can tell, can't you, like you're saying before, you know, when you walk back into an area, you can feel it's, um, just by looking at it, there's more vegetation, there's more food. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. And, and, and as you're pointing out to me, the, the um, scratches on the floor and just all of the what, what's happening you feel like you're back in the right area, yeah don't exactly you? you know quite prolific there there here yeah. there so they're obviously around That's only the second squirrel we've seen. Yeah. It's just great seeing it, like, how you operate and how you work. <laughs> I must admit, like, I thought you'd be a lot more having to be stealth than you actually. The trouble is, mate, look, look where we are. Everything's yeah. barren. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They're going to see you a mile off. If we get in front of the tree, use the tree to obscure ourselves. Broken neck. Good shot. Thank you. Yeah, very pleased with that. Very pleased. Completely smashed to pieces. Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. I think that's a a fitting end to be honest. We've chased them all through. Definitely you worked out. All well. through the wood. Yeah. And it's really not a case of shooting sitting ducks, is it? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we couldn't get any, anywhere near a, a sensible shot range on them. Come back to the pond. Use the tree as camouflage, and there's a single mallard on here. Yeah. Use the tree. Got in what I'd say, what were we? 25 yards. Yeah, I'd agree. Definitely. 25 yards or so. Yeah. 
we managed to take him out. It was a great shot, and great to great to witness as well. Good, thank you. That's a, yeah, no, it's the first day, isn't it, with the catapult? Yes, out hunting. definitely. Yeah. Brilliant. Three ducks was what I didn't expect. I thought it'd be a bit more varied than that. But we've only seen two squirrels all day. Yeah. Um, we had a near miss on the squirrel yeah, on the very, second one. Didn't get a shot on the first one. Very near miss on that. Um, pheasants, we've seen two, I think. Yeah. But struggled to, like hell to try and get a shot on them because they were just off. <laughs> so, yeah, but I'm very pleased to end up with three ducks. And I must admit, I am very impressed. I'm very, <laughs> very impressed. And uh, thank you very much for taking us on our first Always a pleasure, mate. No, thank you for filming it. It's been absolutely brilliant. Awesome. Congratulations. Well thank done. Thank you, mate. Cheers.